Yeah, issues. try cannot. Okay. Thank you, thank you. So um, I think it's very highly connected to what um uh, Kai actually mentioned on his last slide. That at the end of the day, um, it's um it's us to actually tell the clients and emphasize on them that they to trust and to know and trust that the business cycle is working out for them. And sometimes when we actually to answer Kai's question about like how do you handle bad when you have to settle bad news for clients? And often, especially right now when the portfolios are not doing well, how do we actually go back to them? Um, and review I think more, a lot of the time sometimes we can get intimidated we feel very happy when there's good news to tell them like oh your portfolio is making money like top up blah 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 here and there but yet at the same time we feel very negative why like is it because we take that responsibility and let them to school because no our boundaries is not to be scolded by them it's not their portfolio is not doing well. It's something that is in the reality it's all in the current economic outlook also so when um I do I, I don't really have clients who act out badly, but if I ever do, um, I think it's very important to have um to to re to re-emphasize again, like number one, um every everybody in the market is actually going through this together. So they are not the only one. And then secondly, it's also to re-emphasize to trust um and their decision. Sometimes it's some they get very shaken um about their own portfolio because that's what people do. That you saw the whole is, um, emotional bias, the market psychology, right? People get very affected when the people get very high when there's a lot of money, but people get very low when there's very little money. Why? Because there is a lot of attachment um, to the money as well. So one thing that I would love to actually talk about today was about um, I don't know if any of y'all experienced this, but this was my own personal experience. Sometimes why do we always feel that if there is a lot of money, but and sometimes we still feel like there's not enough? Right. Why sometimes when like uh, clients like, hey, I, my portfolio is doing well, but hey, I still not enough, eh? I still not enough. Eh? And when you handle this kind of clients, they are like a crocodile, they are like, oh, you. It's like they, they have, um, they have this uh, never ending thirst that for them, nothing is enough. But yet, even when you tell them, you say that you saw your portfolio has improved by a lot, then like, hey, no, I want more, I want more. If you actually meet this, these are very demanding clients, and these are also clients with have, they have lack mindset to begin with. So that's why whatever that they see, no matter how much what they see in their bank account, in their their um from whatever that they see around them, it's all not enough. Yeah. And um sometimes when we want to handle such clients, it is it can be pretty challenging. But um I think it's very important for us as advisors to not get sucked into their lack energy. Because if we do right, we end up serving um a client that is very difficult and someone that is also very um they will suck the life out of you, law. So there's actually two types of uh, schools when it comes to, to, to handling money. And why money at the end of the day is a very topic, um, is a topic that comes in with a lot of baggage is because there is a lot, so for some people, all of us, we have different backgrounds of how we grew up around money. For some of us, we actually grew up listening to our parents that they say money is never enough. 钱不够用, 钱不够用. So at the end of the day, like where we grew up, we also think that hey, my, everywhere, like I need more, I need more, I need more. And then sometimes when you think about it, like, how come like I keep chasing after money and even I keep saving and saving money is still not enough. So it actually goes back to that that past when you were growing up because when we are kids, we are a blank piece of paper. Whatever our parents tell us is what we grow up with. So on the other hand, if you have another household where the child actually goes up to like say, eh, how come I have a... a um, the parents always say, you know, um, be grateful. And they also say that, you know, um, there's always a lot of opportunities. Don't have to worry. You don't have to compete. And there's a lot of opportunities. Like they have a very abundant mindset and a very big mindset. You will also end up embodying that as well. So a lot of the times, like for me, I also feel that, hey, why do I always in the at one point in time in my life, I keep having to, oh, I need to get this in order. I need to have this amount in order to feel good. I need to have this in order to feel good. And that's actually what very common everywhere around us as well. It's what we call attachment to money. So at the end of the day, what I feel that um, sometimes when we deal with these clients, it goes a lot more than what they see on the paper value on their portfolio, but it's actually their emotions around money as well. A lot of them, sometimes when I talk to them, I tell them, say that, is it really true that um, your portfolio is not making money? Do you think so? Like I ask them point blank. Do you really think that your money is not, um, your, your portfolio is not doing well for you? And then they like, mm, yeah, you are right. And I tell them that if, you know, if that's the case, even if I give them a portfolio that does $100 million, it's still not enough for them. 
because they this what they what the problem is is not with how much that they have in the bank account, how much is in the portfolio, but what they what their mindset is, which is clearly in the lack mindset. So people in lack mindset, as like what I mentioned previously, is in the survival mindset. It's where everything is not enough, everything is scarce. Yeah, and but on the other hand, the nice clients that we would love to deal with are the people who, when we go back to them and we review, hey, actually, previously we talked about this, right? Your portfolio was like that, so right now it has improved by a lot. Yeah, right now I know may, the economy may not be as best, but you know, trust that as long as you stay invested in the your your economic in the in the portfolio, it will make it back one. Right, because after it has proven through many cycles to re-emphasize on what Kai built on. Every time when there's an economic crash or economic downturn, it will go up again. There can never be an economy where it just crashes and it stays forever dead. The whole world will die. So when I actually explain that to them, they are like, oh yeah, you're right. So I say that right now, maybe the economy is do not doing well. And it's a very known fact. It's not something that is in our, just in our AIA company or you know the other companies, A, B, or C. But it's in the whole general outlook. Like next year is going to be even worse. So my question to you is that, are we always going to be very triggered by, oh, my, 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 and always like eyeing and eyeballing like our portfolio, like drop, 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 and then we, we, we feel very shaken, right? Or at the end of the day, we look at it, we say that like what, uh, what Hui Xiang said, right? Okay, instead of like thinking straight away, like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm losing my money, I'm losing my money. Instead of thinking that, right? Hey, actually, this is where I'm accumulating money at a bargain price. I'm accumulating more money at a bargain price. If you flip it to that instantly, right, it's that instant shift, right? The person starts to say, hey, actually, I'm accumulating more money. Then that's when they, they will feel a lot more at ease. So most importantly, as the advisors, we need to get very grounded in this fact and this reality, right? Then when we go and meet them, we are, we are very grounded. We won't get shaken by and challenged by their lax mindset or because of the fact that they are triggered because of their portfolio looking that as though it's losing money. So... Um, that's just one thing that actually just came up a lot when uh, when Kai was talking about the business cycle. Because when we are always very triggered and uh, very emotionally led, right? When we are very emotionally led by the money, when, it's, when we have a lot of money in our bank account, we feel very good. But when the money drops, we feel like shit, right? We are always, in Chinese words, la, we are always chained by our emotions. So this actually brings me to one of the topics that um, I, I also... Can I share? Yeah. Right. So there is this thing called the emotional scale and it's a proper like psychology, uh, 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 psychology. Wait. Did you share? Okay. Yeah. So on a scale like of 1 to 22, like 22 is like the bottom. It's like the worst kind of feeling. Okay, if people always constantly worry, like especially when we sell insurance and we come from a place that we worry about our next sale and we go to our client being worried or where we sell our ILP feeling doubtful, right? People will not buy one. But however, when we actually, when we go there, like, hey, well, actually, right, the, 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 the economy right now may not be as best. However, it's a very good time to actually buy it at a low price because you will see that whatever we've mentioned on, it will go up. And you see, actually, in 2021 versus 2008, and you see, what well, actually, uh, you actually uh, two to three times it, two to three times the price. Right. So when you actually come from that space of like expect, of course, expectations also comes with time. We have to emphasize that how it's actually how when you sell the ILP at the beginning, when you sell them with the very clear expectations that they have to wait, they will not come hounding at your door when the prices drop. Because they know that that was the expectation that you set up with. This is what I'm very clear with all of my clients that when I sell them any for ILP, I say that you have to wait. You have to wait. If you cannot wait, don't buy this. If you cannot wait, don't buy this. Go and buy, go and go and gamble or something instead. Go and take other alternatives. Just don't buy um, anything from me if you're not willing to wait. So what that is one thing I feel that when we when um to do the selling, we have to be very clear on that to set the expectations and the ground. And then when we go back to the review, we have to also be very grounded in um the and don't go there like hey, you know, later they challenge me because later when they challenge you, your challenge, right? That's when they also like, hey, this advisor is not able to help me to stay grounded on. Sometimes when people buy from us, they also want that 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 groundedness for us to hold on to that, hey, your portfolio is doing well. Your, your portfolio is actually, um, if you just hang on a little bit more, you'll be able to, 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 to make some money out of it. All you have to do is be patient, right? 
be patient and be willing to wait and stay invested. Anything that we do invest, including when we invest in ourselves, is all for the long-term one. It's not to say that I sign up for a course today, I next tomorrow can make money. It's never the case. But can I make money next year with my new idea? Yes, I can. You know, can I actually change the way I talk and the change my belief system because of my new course and I go back in, and then I can make money much easier? Yes, I can. That is the intangible way and that's the long-term benefit. So that's what we always have to guide our clients to whenever they are buying, um, especially insurance products because insurance is a long-term game, whether investment or life insurance, everything is all uh, for long-term. So at the end of the day, um, for money, money else can also be a very, money at the end of the day is a very neutral object. But why some people, they grow up with very good feelings about money, why some people grow up with very bad feelings around money, it's all because of when they were young, the things that people tell them. So when you actually have to ask yourself, last time I always think that people, my parents always say, uh, money not enough, question yourself, is it true that now whatever that you have is not enough? Because last time our parents was in survival generation, ma. now it's no longer the case. So whatever that they say sometimes, right, we have to be very consciously aware and if we can drop that idea, drop the whatever, drop these unsub subconscious thoughts that were actually running in our mind, we actually realize that, eh, whatever that person, people say, I don't have to apply it into my life right now. And then that's when things will start to change from there. And you will start to release all these emotions and um, unnecessary baggage around money, around um, anxiety, around money as well. And that's when all the hustling and all that will finally stop. So, um... I think for me, I uh, my my sharing will stop here. But um, this is what I would love to to share with everybody today. Thank you.